my channel. I hope you guys are doing very well today. So today's video, I am super excited because it is going to be my makeup collection video. I don't know how I'm going to separate all of this. I don't know if it's going to be one video or split up into multiple videos. Um, obviously, you guys will know by the time this is posted. Um, I will say I did do a collection video last year around this time, so I will link that down below. My collection has changed quite a bit, um, and also just, I feel like I don't need to say this, but I'm going to. This is obviously my personal makeup collection. This is probably excessive to most people, but I am a makeup lover. I'm a makeup enthusiast. I just, I love trying new makeup, and I will, I feel like I will always have a little bit of a larger collection when it comes to makeup so please just keep in mind that this is a judge-free zone and this is what I spend my money on um, and this is what my hobby is this is something that I enjoy doing I enjoy spending my money on um, just like some people spend money on video games or collecting certain items this is kind of what I do so just please keep that in mind you guys are always so sweet and so nice so I feel like I don't necessarily have to say that but just in case for those of you who are visiting so thank you guys so much and let's go ahead and get started all right so firstly this is from first aid beauty this is the pores be gone matte primer i really enjoy this one i think this does a really great job at smoothing the skin and it does keep the matte the, the skin a little bit matte throughout the day it's not the most mattifying primer but i do enjoy it it is a little bit older in my collection but i still like keeping it around and then we have this one from touch and soul this is the no problem primer this is actually very very good i'm very impressed with how this primer performs i think that it does an amazing job at blurring your pores smoothing the skin and just being a really nice face for makeup we have this one from elf this is the elf matte putty primer this is the one that's white and this one is pretty good you guys i do enjoy this one it's a little bit newer to my collection so i'm still testing it but I like it. I think it's really, really good. And then I do have this one from L'Oreal. This is the Magic Perfecting Base. This is actually really nice. I would imagine that this is pretty similar to the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. It's almost like a whipped texture, and this is really, really nice at blurring the skin. This was recommended many, many times by Jen Phelps here on YouTube. I do have um, two sizes of the Tatcha the liquid silk canvas this is by far my favorite primer in the entire world i thoroughly enjoy this one i really didn't mind that this mini came in a set that i purchased because i love that i can take this for traveling this is just by far the best primer that ever exists i just love it so much then we have this one from nyx this is the marshmallow primer and this is pretty good it's not my favorite by any means i think that there are better even at the drugstore but i do have this one in my collection and then i do have this one from Rare Beauty, this is the pore diffusing one. So she has two. Um, she has like more of an illuminating one and then she has this pore diffusing one. They're just okay in my opinion. And then lastly, in the like pore blurring, skin smoothing section, I have the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. Really enjoy this one as well. I think this is a really, really great purchase um, from Wet n Wild. Now let's get into my more like hydrating um, primers. This one is from Smashbox. This has been a longtime favorite of mine. It's the Photo Finish Primerizer. It's kind of like a primer and moisturizer in one. I thoroughly enjoy this one. I love the way it makes my skin feel. If you are someone who has dry skin and you're just wanting to have something that's going to kind of like refresh your skin, liven it up a little bit, this creates a beautiful hydrated base for any type of foundation, but especially like more mattifying foundations. So I thoroughly enjoy that one. And then I don't know if you would consider this a primer, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I kind of like to mix this with my foundations. I do have the shade Too Light, um, and I like it. I think it's really, really beautiful. Here's one that I'm not absolutely in love with. This is the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. This one is nice. It feels really nice on the skin, but I much prefer the one from Hard Candy, which I'll show you here in a little bit, as well as the Milk Makeup High grit primer um, this one I just feel like I, I don't really enjoy elf primers that much I know that a lot of people love their primers but I just can't get on with a lot of them if I'm being honest I think this matte putty primer one is the far like the best that I've ever tried from elf um, so it's just not my favorite 
Then we have this one from Milani. So this is the Chill Out Soothing Primer. This one is really nice, but it's not my favorite. It doesn't do very many special things to the skin, if I'm being honest. I much prefer something that's a little bit more smoothing to the skin, a little bit pore minimizing, and this one doesn't really do that for me. So, um, yeah, it's okay. I can I can definitely see myself possibly decluttering that one in the future. One, however, that I do love for Milani is this one. This is the Supercharged Dewy Primer, and this feels amazing on the skin. It smells really good as well. It's kind of like a citrusy smell. Really enjoy this one for Milani. It does give your skin some dew. It's not overly dewy, though. I think it just really creates a hydrated base more than anything. Um, and I do think that various skin types could enjoy this one. Then I have my two fabulous face primers from Becca, RIP Becca, by the way. Um, these no longer exist. So I have the backlight priming filter as well as the first light priming filter. And I thoroughly enjoy both of these. And it's really sad that these are no longer available. I'm still glad to own them. But of course, these I just kind of probably will use like in the background to not really feature them on my channel very much. But I love both of them. I much prefer the purple one better. Um, but yes, I think Becca did amazing at primers. This one I got in an Ipsy bag and I still haven't used it. I probably should declutter this, but this is from Ciate London and this is the Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer. It has like these little seeds in it or something. I don't really know, but um, it feels really nice like on my hands whenever I like swatched it, but I haven't used it and I haven't had any desire to use it. So I should probably declutter that one, but I would love to try it out first. And then I have this one from the brand Say, and this is their Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. And I'm a little bit confused because I don't know if this is a primer or a liquid highlighter, but I kind of like using it as a primer. It's a really pretty kind of like champagne color and it is very, very glowy. Like I actually, I filmed one video um, where I used this as my primer and I don't know if I maybe went in with a glowy foundation as well, but oh my gosh, my skin look almost, looked almost oily um, and a part of me was like, Sabrina, you should have powdered before, but honestly, like it still gave a really nice glow. So I like that one, but it is a little bit easy to go too, like, to go too heavy with that one. And then here is the other one from Rare Beauty. This is the Illuminating Primer. So this is the first primer that she actually came out with. So this is the one that I first purchased. And again, I love Rare Beauty, but I do not think that they do very well with primers, I will say. Um, and this one is just okay. It's very beautiful. I will say it's less dewy than the same one that I just mentioned, but um, it is still a really nice option. And then this is definitely one of my favorites. This is from Hard Candy, and it's the Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer with 12-hour makeup grip. I talk about this one a lot on my channel, and I really enjoy this one. If you're wanting a drugstore primer that really does make a difference with your foundation, look no further. This one is so amazing, and it's such a close, close dupe to the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I think this is actually the closest dupe that you'll ever find, and this one really does make your makeup last all day long. And then I do have the original Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This one I've actually used quite a bit of, you guys can see. This is a really good one. I still thoroughly enjoy this one. Will I repurchase it once I finish it? Probably not. I'm just not super into like the gripping primers anymore, um, which is why I feel like I don't enjoy a lot of the e.l.f. primers, but this one is a really good one, as you guys can probably tell. So now let's get into concealers. All right, so my first concealer is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer. I do have the shade 110 Fair, what is it? 110 Fair, and I like this one, I do. I think it's a really, really good option. I do remember it in the past being a little bit more hydrating, but I still really enjoy this one. And then one of my favorite primers um, that I've discovered in 2021 is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape Concealer. I do have two of them, um, and both of them are in different shades. So in the mini one, I have the shade 16N Fair Light Neutral, and then in the full size, I have 22N Light Neutral. 
and this you guys is one of my favorites i have thoroughly enjoyed this one so much this year i love mixing the two putting the brighter one more in the inner corner and then you know putting the rest with the um more like skin toned shade for me i just i really enjoy this one it's honestly competing with my elf hydrating camo concealer the hydrating camo concealer is obviously more affordable but i have just really been enjoying the tarte one so much another concealer lately that i've been enjoying is this one from nyx this is the nyx bear with me concealer serum i have the shade light in this one i absolutely love the pink packaging um, this one is really nice. It leaves your under eyes feeling very hydrated and it does give pretty good coverage even though it is considered a concealer serum. I just enjoy this one a lot and I think it's a great release. Then I have this Kosas Revealer Super Creamy and Brightening Concealer. I have the shade 03W. This I went ahead and purchased from the Kosas website and it was in a set with this concealer in the Cloud Set Powder. And I think it was like for 25% off. Everybody and their mother talks about this concealer. So I wanted to pick it up and try it out for myself. And I'm still testing it. It's not my favorite. I think that there are so many other drugstore concealers that are far better, but I'm still testing it out. Then I have this one from Benefits. This is the Benefits Boing Cakeless Concealer. I need to use this one more. I feel like I don't even have my thoughts gathered on this one yet, um, but I do have this one in my collection and it is pretty full coverage. Then we have this one from Maybelline. This is the Dream Lumi Touch Concealer from Maybelline. This is actually a backup that I've had for probably over a year at this point. I really need to um, take it out and play with it because I remember really, really enjoying this concealer. Um, so I don't even know if that one is sold anymore. I would be interested to find out. And then I have this one from Neutrogena and this is the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer. And I have the shade Light 03. I think the shade is called Sugar. This is pretty good. I heard that it was comparable to the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I haven't tried that concealer, so I actually wouldn't be able to tell you guys, but I, I do like this one. I think it's pretty good. Do I think it's worth the Neutrogena price tag? Probably not, um, but I have been enjoying it. Then we have this one from Makeup Revolution. This is the Conceal and Hydrate Concealer. I have the shade C5. Really like this one. I think it's very, very pretty under the eyes. I do prefer the original Conceal and Define over this one, but this is a good option as well. Another Makeup Revolution one is this one. This is the Eye Bright Illuminating Under Eye Concealer. I do have the shade Light. Absolutely love the packaging of this one. I love the rose gold. It does have that sponge tip applicator. So if that bothers you, you may not, not you may not like this one, but I love just kind of how light coverage this one is, but how hydrating and awake it makes your under eyes look. So I really, really enjoy that one. All right, so then we have this one from Koki. This is the Koki Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. I have the shade Light. This is definitely not a favorite concealer, but I do like it. Um, it's kind of similar to like, the Makeup Revolution one where it's not the greatest coverage, but it does make your under eyes look pretty nice. And then I have this one from Wet n Wild. This is the Mega Last Incognito Concealer. And I have the shade Light Beige. This one is pretty good. It's not a favorite. I was kind of sad because I thought I would really enjoy this one more than I do, but it is a nice option for sure. Then, of course, we have the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I have the shade Light Peach. Really enjoy this one. You guys already know that. This is just my all-time favorite concealer ever. I love it so much. And then this one I never use, and I feel really bad about that. This is from ColourPop. It's the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. This one's pretty nice. Again, it's very hydrating underneath the eyes, which I do like. Um, and yeah, I don't have much to say about that one. I do like one that I need to pull out more. I will say I don't love it as much as I used to, but this is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. And this is very full coverage. And I do think that this is the most similar to the original Tarte Shape Tape, if I'm being honest. I just think that this one um, gives very, very full coverage. I think it's actually better than Tarte Shape Tape. Um, I know so many people compare 
everything to Tarte Shape Tape, but this one ultimately is the best dupe in my opinion. Then we have from Dose of Colors. This is the Meet Your Hue Concealer, and I have the shade 11, and this one is really nice as well. I don't think that you need to spend like the high-end prices for this one, but it is good. And then this is no longer available from what I remember, but this is the Marc Jacobs Accomplice Concealer. It almost looks like it's like a lipstick, but this is a great full coverage concealer. I love using this one whenever I have a lot to cover. Maybe I have some acne and I'm taking like photos or I'm going to a wedding or like a really special event. I love going in with that one beforehand. And then finally, this is technically a powder, but it's Oh, well, this is a powder, but it's technically still a concealer. And this is the Bare Minerals Well Rested Concealer. Um, this really does brighten the under eyes. I don't love it as much. I was really hoping that I would really enjoy this one, but I just don't. Um, but it does really brighten up the under eyes. Okay, so those are all of the concealers. Now let's get into a few foundations. So I do have this one from CoverGirl, and this is the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Stay Fabulous Foundation, and I have the shade Classic Ivory 810. This one is really nice, and um, I think it's a really great like everyday drugstore foundation. One of my favorite drugstore foundations of all time is the Physician's Formula The Healthy Foundation. I have the shade LN3. This is just an amazing foundation, you guys. If you can still find this, and if you can find your shade, I highly recommend that you pick it up it's just so amazing it performs like a luxury foundation honestly um, and then we have this one from physicians formula that i've actually really really been loving this year this was a release that came out in 2021 this is the physicians formula butter believe it foundation i feel like physicians formula does really really well with foundations i do have the shade fair to light in this one in case you were wondering this one is definitely a lot more full coverage than the healthy foundation and i do suggest that you go in with layers with this one because you can get a little bit cakey if you put on too much at one time so love that one but i just like to apply it in layers another one that i really love is this one from l'oreal and this is the l'oreal age perfect radiant serum foundation i do have the shade 15 rose ivory this is a stunning stunning foundation it is very glowy so if you have very oily skin i don't know if this one will work out for you but this is a stunning foundation it does have spf 50 which is very nice because um, you can get that sun protection as well as you know wearing a foundation so i do enjoy that one then we have this one from elf and i do wear the shade vanilla this is the flawless finish foundation this is a very affordable foundation i think it's only for like six dollars so if you are wanting um, a very affordable foundation that performs very well this is a good option however one that i think performs even better it's absolutely beautiful on the skin is this one from believe beauty and this one is the skin finish foundation it does come with a very very nice pump here i do have the shade nude this one is stunning so stunning i love this one i think it performs so well like seriously like a high-end foundation and then we have this one from Revlon, and this is the Revlon Color Stay. I have the shade 200 Nude, and this is supposed to be for combination or oily skin. I will say this is pretty matte on the skin. Um, I do think that I would probably benefit from the normal to dry one better, but this is pretty great coverage. It wears very, very well throughout the day, um, but this is a little bit too mattifying for me, so maybe it's something that I can pull for during the summer, or I may declutter it and get the normal to dry one because I love the coverage and I love the long wear of that foundation. Another foundation that I have that I'm still kind of testing. I owned it at one point, but the shade that I had in it originally was far too light for me. So I repurchased it in a better shade for me, and I'm just still testing it. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation, and I do have the shade Shell Ivory. Um, and this one, it's so weird because I thought the packaging for the Dewy Photo Focus was different. I thought this was the original Photo Focus at first, but it does say Dewy here. So um, this one I'm still testing out. I think it looks beautiful on the skin, but my concern with this one is just the wear time. So I'm still testing that one out. 
this one has quickly become a favorite. At first, I was kind of unsure about it, but again, kind of similar to the Physicians Formula Butter Believe It Foundation, I have to go in in layers. And this is the Oma by Sharon C. Flawless in Real Life Skin Perfecting Foundation in the shade Fair Lady T2. And this one you can find at Walmart. It's kind of like the drugstore counterpart to Oma Beauty. And this one is very beautiful on the skin. It's also very long wearing. I kind of use this one interchangeably with the Butter Believe It Foundation. Um, but again, I like to work in layers for this one. Um, okay, then we have this one from ColourPop. Of course, the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I have the shade um, Light 55N. This is a stunning foundation, you guys. So beautiful. I love the finish that this leaves on your skin. And it also wears pretty well throughout the day as well. So really, really enjoyed that one. Then we have the Rare Beauty Foundation and I have the shade 180W. I feel like some products from Rare Beauty work really well for me and then others do not. And this is kind of the one that is one of those products where it kind of falls into that does not category. I'm still testing it out. I haven't had it very long, but um, so far it's just okay in my opinion. Then another great drugstore um, foundation option is this one from Profusion. This is the Profu Profusion Feel Good Skin Long Wear Skin Perfector. It does have SPF 15 and I have the shade Light One Warm Yellow. Um, and this is a good one. It lasts very well throughout the day on the skin. And this, these two paired together is a match made in heaven. Like your makeup will be bulletproof, I guarantee it. So that is everything in the first drawer. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so now we are on to the next drawer. And in this drawer, I have foundations continued. And then I have some powders, like pressed powders. And then I have cream bronzers as well as just regular powder bronzers. So let's finish off with foundations. And these foundations are actually my more like lighter coverage foundations. And this one I've actually never tried before. I got it on sale at Target. This is from Undone, Undone Beauty, and this is the Matte Unfoundation Matte Tent. And this one, I have the shade Cream Light. I picked this up on Sarah Rose's recommendation. She talks really well about this one, and for some reason, I haven't tried it yet. Um, I'm just a little bit nervous, because <laughs> it is pretty mattifying. I tested it out like a little bit on my skin and it was pretty mattifying. So we shall see how I enjoy that one. Then this one is pretty new to my collection. It's from the brand Purito, which is a Korean skin, uh, excuse me, a Korean. Well, it is a Korean skincare line, but it also has, they also have a few things of makeup. And this is the Sika Clearing BB Cream. And I have the shade number 23 uh, Natural Beige. This is pretty nice. Again, it's fairly new to my collection, so I haven't tried it that that much. So um, this is like a Taylor Wynn, Jessica Braun favorite. So um, I'm glad to have this one. All right, another um, like CC cream type of product is this one from Neutrogena. This is the Neutrogena Matte CC Cream. I do have the shade 2.0 Porcelain. This one is nice, however, it's not a favorite. So um, yeah, I'm still testing it out though. If you see, if you hear something like running, it's my cat. She actually found one of my beauty sponges that fell on the floor and she's just playing around with that beauty sponge, having the best time of her life. So just in case you were wondering what that noise was. Then one of my favorite, favorite foundation and favorite discoveries of 2021 is this from L'Oreal, the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I have the shade two to three light. This is beautiful. I absolutely hate the dropper packaging. I wish that it was just a pump um, or a doe foot or something, but this is stunning on the skin. I love it so much and it wears beautifully. It goes on beautifully at initial application. I just, I love this. I thoroughly enjoy this so much. And I feel like no matter what type of skin day I'm having, no matter of how my skin is acting that day, that foundation is just perfect. And then we have a tinted moisturizer that is okay. I'm still happy to have it in my collection, but it is from Urban Decay and it is the Stay Naked Hydro Maniac Foundation. So this came out this year along with a thousand other tinted hydrators. I do have the shade 30 Light, and this one, like I said, is just okay. 
I'm still testing it out. I haven't had it too, too long, um, but I did want to try it out, so hence why I have it. A tinted highlighter that I really enjoy, however, is actually this one from Wet n Wild. This is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. It does have hyaluronic acid as well as squalene. Um, this one is nice, and in, in this one I have the shade Fair. This one does oxidize just a little bit, so keep that in mind. So I went ahead and just remained with the, like, the, I think it's the fairest shade because I knew that it would oxidize a little bit and this does work well for me. Something that completely blew my mind was this one from Shop Miss A. This is from the AOA Studio brand. It's the Perfect BB Cream. I have this shade 025 Fair. This is like a dollar or a dollar fifty and it performs so well. It does, it is a BB cream, so it's pretty light coverage, but it gives pretty good coverage for a BB cream, if I'm being honest. It wears really well. I mean, there's so many great things about this product that I highly recommend that one. And then another tinted hydrator. I have so many foundations, you guys. It is unreal. <laughs> Um, I have this one from Tarte. This is the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. Um, I sampled this in a Ipsy, and then I went ahead and purchased the full size because I finished the entire mini. Um, and this is really good. I have this shade 20N Light Neutral. I think 20N is pretty much my shade when it comes to Tarte. And this is good. It really is. It's probably the best tinted hydrator that I have in my collection. Really, really enjoy it. Then we have the infamous Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I have the shade number 21. This is beautiful on the skin. The shade is kind of funky. It kind of almost looks like it's gray on me, but then I guess whenever it dries into the skin, it really does match my skin tone very well, so I don't understand the science behind that, but this is beautiful. Purchased it on YesStyle. And then my final foundation is a beautiful foundation and it's the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Makeup SPF 45. And I have the shade 2-in-1 Desert, Desert Beige. And this is a beautiful foundation. It reminds me a lot of the L'Oreal like True Match, the one that I was loving so much this year. Um, I do recommend that one over this one, but if you are someone who enjoys higher end foundations, I do recommend this one for sure. It's beautiful. So now let's get into some bronzers. Um, or no, let's get into powders actually. For powder, I do have this one from CoverGirl and sadly it's no longer available. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Powder and I do have the shade in this one, Classic Ivory. Um, and I actually love this so much that I hit pan on it, you guys. Um, this one is just such a good powder. It's a shame that they discontinued this entire healthy line because I loved the um, foundation in that line as well. And then I love the powder. So it's a shame, but I understand. And then I do have the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I have the shade 185. I am really annoyed because I got hard pan somehow. I don't understand how. Um, I don't know if maybe my like sun, my foundation or something wasn't dry yet. And then I went in with this one. Um, but yeah hard pan, but I love the product so much. Then one of the best pressed powders, in my opinion, is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder. Such an underrated press powder, you guys. This is amazing. This is going to make your makeup bulletproof and make your makeup last all day. Here is what the outer packaging looks like. It is just it is such a good powder and severely underrated in my opinion. Another pressed powder that I have is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Press Powder. I do have the shade, I think it's L1 Porcelain. Yep, L1 Porcelain. I have finished one of these off completely and this is a repurchased one. Um, for some reason, I don't gravitate towards it as much as I thought I would, but it's still nice to have in my collection because I do enjoy it. Another powder that I have freaking hard pan in and I don't understand how I did it was this one from Kosas. It's the Cloud Set Powder. I do have the shade Breezy. And I don't know how I did this, you guys. I do not know. And it is so frustrating. This powder is pretty nice. It's fairly new to my collection, so I'm still testing it out. I really enjoy the packaging, though. But I don't know how 
how I got the freaking hard pan and it drives me nuts. So those are all of the pressed powders. I obviously have my Essence Be Bright Banana Powder, but that's like in my everyday makeup drawer. You guys know I have that one um, and I love it. So now let's get into some cream bronzers. I went cream bronzer crazy. I just went cream, cream products crazy in general. Then I have this one from Half Kate. So Half Kate is like an indie brand. It's super, super cute. And this is one of their candy paints. Um, I think it's just their candy paints. And this is a cream bronzer in the shade Morning View. First off, look at how cute the packaging is on this one. Really, really cute. Love the purple, love the heart shaped. And this is what the cream bronzer looks like. So it looks a little bit dark and a little bit intimidating in the pan, but it blends out beautifully. It is very balmy and very like um, creamy. So it kind of reminds me if like Tower 28 had a cream bronzer. I know that they have like the Bronzino one, but the cream blushes from Tower 28 are much more creamy than the cream bronzer. Um, so this one is just super creamy and pigmented and I thoroughly enjoy it. Then I have this one from Tarte and this is a love of mine for sure. This is the breezy cream bronzer in the shade Seychelles. I do have the mini size and if you're wondering why this one looks like it hasn't even been touched is because I actually have a mini of this one. Let me find it. So I actually have like a very, very small size of this one that I have used a lot. And then this is like the actual mini that you can actually purchase. And again, I have the shade Seychelles. This is just such a beautifully formulated cream bronzer. And then this is what my mini looks like. It looks kind of gross because <laughs> I've definitely used this one quite a bit. Then of course I have my Milk Makeup Matte Cream Bronzer in the shade Baked. Thoroughly enjoy this one, love it so, so much. It's definitely holy grail status. And then I have this one from Wet n Wild. This is the um, Wet n Wild Contour Makeup Stick. And I have the shade Oaks on You. This is very, very um, similar to the Milk Makeup one. So if you're not wanting to spend the high-end prices, I do understand and check this one out. It is stunning on the skin. Then I have my e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in the shade Honey Drip. And here is what this one looks like. It looks kind of gross in the pan, but it's because I use it quite frequently. I just wish that their packaging was wider. Like I wish I could fit my brush in here. It's kind of hard to fit my brush in. So really enjoy the formula though. Then I have the Tower 28 Bronzino Bronzer in the shade West Coast. This is a beautiful, beautiful bronzer formula. I love that it's almost like shimmery because it kind of gives like a uniqueness to the skin and it really does stand out in my cream bronzer collection. And then I do own the Patrick Ta um, Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo in the shade She's Sculpted. Not a favorite, not a favorite, unfortunately. I much prefer some other products. Well, that's a lie. I probably will prefer the cream blush um, products as well. Or, or what am I saying? I probably will prefer the cream blush duos more so, and I'm actually waiting on that to arrive. Um, but this is okay. Like it's good. The cream formula is amazing. It's mainly the powder bronzer that I'm not in love with, but still it's really good. The packaging is luxe. Um, I just, I'm not like super in love with that product. Another cream bronzer that I have is this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is a cream bronzer in the shade Golden Tan and another really good cream bronzer formula. However, I will say that the shades from ABH are a little bit more warm toned than I would like. Love the packaging so much, but again, the shades are not my favorite, but I love the formula. Then I have this one. I've actually never used this and I definitely should. This is from e.l.f. and it's their Radiant Bronze and it's just a like stick bronzer. They probably don't even own this anymore. I picked it up at a TJ Maxx and I haven't used it because it looks like it's gonna be glittery. Like I might even declutter this one. I don't even know why I picked this up. It looks very red toned and glittery. <laughs> So I don't know, I will use it and test it out. And if I'm not in love right away, then I'm gonna declutter it. 
And then another cream bronzer that I have is the newest cream bronzer to my collection. And this is from the brand I'm Mimi, which is a Korean makeup brand. And this is just one of their um, like cream sticks. And I have it in 001 bronzer. So it's just a cream bronzer. Um, and here is what it looks like. This was recommended so many times by, I believe her name is Amanda Z here on YouTube. And this is a beautiful cream bronzer. It's really, really beautiful. It's not a favorite, but I love how affordable it is. I will say though that the shade range isn't great because it is Korean makeup. So just keep that in mind. And then the final cream bronzer that I have, and I have so many, I know, this is from the brand Say, and this is their Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in the shade Light Bronze. And here is, first off, what the packaging looks like. It's really, really nice. This is kind of what I wish Elf's would look like. Um, and here is what the bronzer looks like. I love the color so much. The formula, however, is very, it's, it's good, but it's buildable. So it's not super pigmented right off the bat. So just keep that in mind. All right, and those are all of my cream bronzers. So now let's get into my powder bronzers. So starting off with this one, this is a mini and it was super, like I cannot believe how much this mini bronzer retails for actually. I think it retails for like 70 something dollars, but this is from Tom Ford and this is the glow bronzer in the shade 02 Terra. And I have the mini, but I actually picked mine up in a cosmetic company outlet store. So I did not pay that price, however, but the packaging is absolutely stunning. I love how luxe it looks. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad that I got this for not the full price. <laughs> and then another bronzer that is just so stunning. I absolutely love this formula. This is from Ofra and it's the Samantha March collaboration. It's the bronzer duo in the shade River. Love this one. It's easily a bronzer favorite in my collection. I just, I love it so much. It's absolutely beautiful. One, st one side is a little bit more shimmery. One side is a little bit more matte. Love it. I just mix my brush into all of them. Another bronzer that I love that I actually have the older packaging in is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I do have the shade Deep Bronzer, which is pretty deep, but the shade bronzer just wasn't very pigmented. I'm trying to get it to focus. The shade bronzer just wasn't very pigmented, so I went with the shade Deep. This is a stunning bronzer formula. However, it is a little bit too deep, so maybe I would need to go up just one shade, but it does work for me just fine. But I have to be careful not to go too heavy-handed. Then I have this one for Bare Minerals. This is the Bare Minerals bronzer in the shade Warmth. So it's their Endless Summer bronzer, again, in the shade Warmth. And this one is something that I picked up from TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Um, I love, I didn't even mention it, but I love my Bare Minerals Loose Bronzer in the shade Faux Tan so much that I wanted warmth in the powder bronzer and I picked this up again from TJ or Marshalls. And I'm still testing this one, but the shade Faux Tan, I love so much. I love, 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 love that bronzer so, so much. Recommend that one. And then I have the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer in the shade Sunrise L1. This is a longtime favorite of mine. Really enjoy it. It's one of the best, in my opinion, as far as more illuminating bronzers. I much prefer this one over the Milani Beige Bronzers. So I do enjoy that one. A bronzer that I haven't had in my collection very long that I'm still testing is the Nabla Skin Bronzing Bronzer, and I have the shade Dune. Um, I'm just not sure how I feel about these bronzers. I'm still testing it out. Like I said, I purchased one during the 21 Days of Beauty, and um, yeah, still trying it out. Another one is the Maybelline City Bronzer, and I have the shade 200. This is a nice one, you guys. This is a really, really good one. I love that it's not warm toned at all. It can almost lean a little bit yellow, um, but this is a good one. I do enjoy this one. And then this is actually a bronzer and highlighter duo, but I keep it in here. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Film Star Bronze and Glow, and I have the shade Light to Medium. So this is a bronzer highlight duo. It's actually really, really nice. Um, and the bronzer is a little bit more cool toned because it's kind of like contoury and then the highlight is really stunning as well. So do enjoy that one. 
And then another bronzer that I really enjoy is from Cover FX. It's the Monochromatic Bronzer Duo in the shade Sunkissed Bronze. So you guys probably are very familiar with this formula, but this side is a matte bronzer and then this side is a shimmer side. Really beautiful, very pigmented, so I do try to go in with a lighter hand. And then I do have the um, Physician's Formula Matte Minoy Butter Bronzer in the shade Just Matte Bronzer still testing this one out definitely still testing this one um, I still prefer the butter bronzer over this one but um, still testing it and this scent is is pleasant but I still prefer the butter bronzer scent more then another favorite of mine is the Huda Beauty um, Glowish like it's from the Glowish brand and it's the soft radiance bronzing powder in the shade 02 medium really like this one a lot um, it's more of like a radiance bronzer which is really nice because sometimes i don't want a complete matte bronzer also really enjoy the packaging as well another bronzer that i have is from wet and wild it's one of their color icon bronzers in the shade sunset strip tees i always struggle to open this and i'm not sure why i don't know if it's maybe the sticker but I always struggle with this one. And here is what this bronzer looks like. Fairly new to my collection. I haven't owned it very long, so I'm still testing it. Almost done. This is from L'Oreal. This is the True Match Lumi Bronzed Sun Kiss Bronzer for face and body. I have the shade 01 White. I'm almost wondering if I maybe could have gone with the next shade up, so like the darker one. Um, but this is a stunning, stunning bronzer. I forgot to mention as well, I do have a ranking in my bronzers video. I have a ranking my, um, what is it, foundations video. I also have a ranking my primers video. So I will link all of those below. And um, just in case you were wondering, those are available on my channel. So if you're wanting to know just like more in-depth thoughts and reviews on any of those products, be sure to check them out. I'm obviously starting to do more ranking videos on my channel, but those are the ones that I have so far. And then one of my favorite bronzers, which is sadly unavailable, hopefully they bring it back. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze Coconut Perfect Tan in the shade Tantastic. And this is just such a stunning, stunning bronzer. Love this one, love the shade, love the way it smells, love like the packaging. I love how giant the compact is. Um, and those are all of my bronzers. So I went over like the rest of my foundations, my powders, my cream bronzers, my regular bronzers, and now let's move on to the next drawer. All right, so this next drawer or tray of makeup is definitely my favorite drawer besides my eyeshadow palette drawer. These are my cream blushes and powder blush drawers um, or drawer. Um, I do have a few powders in here as well, but overall it's pretty much just cream blush and powder blush. I already feel you judging me. <laughs> so um, just keep in mind, I love cream blush, okay? And I went cream blush crazy this year, um, so no judgment, remember? So anyways, let's go ahead and begin. So I do have a cream blush from Melt, and this is one of their cream blush lights, and I do have the shade Polished. This is by far one of the best cream blushes out there. This is such an amazing cream blush formula. I absolutely love like the shade Polished. Not so much the packaging, but it's what matter, what counts on the inside, right? And then I do have two of the Milani Cheek Kiss um, cream blushes. I do have the shade Coral Crush, which is this one right here. Such a stunning, stunning cream blush formula. And then the other shade that I have is Nude Kiss, which is a more nude color. So thoroughly enjoy these from Milani. And I think they're a um, wonderful cream blush formula from the drugstore that you can't go wrong with. Another cream blush that I really, I mean, I love a lot of my cream blushes, but this one for Bare Minerals, this is their Bounce and Blur blushes in the shade Blurred Buff. This is just a stunning nude beigey cream blush that works with so many beautiful like eyeshadow, um, what is it, eyeshadow looks, etc. Really, really enjoy this one from Bare Minerals. And then I do own from MAC, the Glow Play Blush in the shade So Natural. And this one I'm still testing out. It's a Jessica Braun favorite, but 
this shade does not really pick up on me very well. So I don't know if she's just that much more fair than me. We're usually like foundation besties <laughs> as far as like, I'm usually a similar shade than, you know, to she is than, um, what am I saying? I'm usually a similar shade with, you know, as her and foundation. So I'm kind of shocked that this doesn't show up on me as much, but, um, it's really beautiful on a swatch. So I'm keeping it for now, but, um, it could be a possible declutter of a cream blush that is fairly new to my collection that I've been loving is the undone beauty lip to cheek palette in the shade Rosewood. This is stunning. So many people recommend these cream blushes from undone beauty and the shade Rosewood is a perfect, perfect, like nudie pink shade. Really, really enjoy this one. I may pick up more shades, but we shall see. And then again, from that half caked brand, this is one of their candy paints. And again, it's a cheek and lip tint in the shade Disco Lemonade. So it looks very intimidating in the pan because it looks very, very bright. Um, however, it does blend out very nicely. Really, really enjoy this one. Again, the formula from Half Caked is really nice. And then I have two of the e.l.f. putty blushes. I have one in the shade Tahiti. And this is more of like a mauve kind of like rosy pink color. It's really beautiful. I decided to get one that looked a little bit deeper so that it would pull more pigmented on my skin. Um, the cream blushes from e.l.f., the putty blushes rather, are not my favorites but they're still nice. Um, and then I have the shade of Bali. And this is definitely a really nice kind of fall inspired cream blush that I wanted to have in my collection. Really trying to show you guys the color, it's kind of hard. All right, a stick blush, a stick cream blush that I have is from the Ilia brand. It's one of their multi sticks in the shade Dreamer. This looks like it could be a really nice kind of like sunburn look colored cream blush. Um, it's just, it looks really nice and it performs well. Do I think it's worth the price? Probably not. I actually got it in a set. So luckily I didn't pray, uh, pay that full price for it, but it is okay. And then from Merit, I do have their cheek color in the shade Cheeky. Same thing, the color is very nice, but it's not worth the full price tag, but it does perform very well. Another cream blush is from Tower 28, and this is their Beach Please cream blush in the shade Magic Hour. This is beautiful, but it is very, very balmy and creamy and pigmented. It almost looks like it's like melted, if I'm being honest. Um, but it's a stunning shade. I really, really enjoy the shade a lot and it is pretty long wearing as well. Then we have this one from Tarte and this is their breezy cream blush in the shade Peach Sunset. Again, I have a mini in this one. This is just a really nice um, coral shade and I think it's perfect for everyday wear. I really love like the aqua packaging. It's so cute. And then we have this one from, what is this brand? Winky Lux, right? Is it Winky Lux? Yeah, Winky Lux. And this is their Cheeky Rose Blush. Just wait till you see this blush, it's stunning. And it's in the shade Crown. So here's what the cream blush looks like. It's stunning. The packaging is beautiful and they formulated this so well that even through continued use, it still holds this beautiful rose shape. I mean, it is stunning. It is a beautiful, beautiful cream blush. A cream blush that I am forever impressed with is this one from Believe Beauty. This is their one of their Color Me cream blushes in the shade Dull Face. So stunning. It's a beautiful kind of cool tones, like rosy pink color. Really, really enjoy this one. Um, I would be tempted to pick up more, but again, I need another cream blush, like I need a bullet in the head. <laughs> and then another one that again forever impresses me is from Shop Missé, so it's probably a dollar or a dollar fifty, which is nuts. And it's from the AOA Studio brand, and it's one of their Hush Cream Sheer Blushes in the shade Cozy. These, this one is pigmented. It's beautiful. It's long wearing. It shows up. I mean, it is so good for a dollar or a dollar fifty. You cannot beat it. I mean, it is amazing. It is so, so impressive to me. Okay, then we're getting into more of my liquid and more like stick cream blushes. 
So this is actually a cream duo. So it's a cream blush on one side and a cream highlighter on the other. It's from the brand Wander Beauty. It's the On The Glow Blush and Illuminator. And um, the blush is in the shade Coral Rose. I actually picked this up at Ross, believe it or not. And here is what the cream blush looks like. Very, very pretty. The formula is nice. Um, most cream blushes perform well, if I'm being honest. It's very rare when one doesn't work out. And then the cream highlighter is in the shade Nude Glow. And it's just like a nice kind of champagne highlight. So it's just okay. Like I'm glad I got it at Ross and didn't pay full price. Then we have another um, cream blush stick in the shade Latte from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is probably one of the worst cream blushes I've tried recently. Like it doesn't perform badly, but as beautiful as the shade is, it kind of like goes away. It goes away once you pretty much blend it into the skin and apply powder. So it's unfortunate because the shade is absolutely stunning, but, um, and the packaging is absolutely stunning, but it, it just fades away. Another cream blush stick is from Jacqueline Cosmetics. It's their cream to powder, powder blush stick in the shade Overruled. Really, really enjoy this one. I'm not sure why the packaging gets so messy, but it is very, very beautiful. And the shade is really nice. The formula of these are absolutely stunning. I thoroughly enjoy these from Jacqueline Cosmetics. Now we're into the more like liquid blushes. So I do have the Ofra. Um, what are these called? These are just liquid blushes and it's in the shade Loyal. So here's what this one looks like. And then I have um, three liquid blushes or blush bombs from Flower Beauty. The first one that I ever purchased is the Flower Beauty blush bomb in the shade Cinnamon. Then I have the shade Spiced, which is really, really stunning. Love, love, love that one. And then I have finally the shade Cheeky, which I've actually never used before. So I definitely need to get on it. But the Flower Beauty blush bombs are amazing. Really, really enjoy these from Flower. Then I have two from Rare Beauty. Um, these are the, uh, I want to say they're just the um, like liquid blushes from them. I have a mini in the shade Adore. I actually got this as like my birthday like reward from Sephora. So I have the shade Adore and then this is the shade Joy, which is my favorite. And these Rare Beauty liquid blushes are absolutely amazing. So love these. And then more liquid blushes. I do have this one from NYX. This is the Sweet Cheeks Soft Cheek Tent and the shade Nude Tude. Really, really beautiful liquid blush formula. And this is a beautiful color for fall. And then I have the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Beam. I haven't tried this one yet. I need to, my sister got it for me for my birthday. It's just such a beautiful like peachy color that I would probably prefer it in the summer. Um, so that's kind of why I haven't used it yet, but I definitely need to get on it. And then I have the Milani Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush and the shade Nude Flush. And this is pretty good. I do prefer the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs more, but this is still a good option. And then I have one more liquid blush and I haven't tried it yet. And this is from Maybelline and it's their Cheek Heat Sheer Gel Cream Blushes in the shade Nude Burn. So I need to test this out. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna like it because it has pretty poor reviews, um, but I wanna test it out anyways. So those are all of my cream blushes.